Hello, <laughs> my name is Olav, and I'm here to talk to you about angry Norwegians. One of them lives here in this house. His name is Arne. He became internationally famous after he decided to cut his neighbor's house in half. You can see the results. They're quite uh, spectacular in a moment. This is what the neighbor's house looked like. <coughs> and after doing this, Mr. Arna, he became maybe the most hated person in Norway. And uh, as a journalist, I really wanted to talk to him. So I went to his house and I met a very friendly and funny and intelligent guy. And this uh, duality fascinated me because how can a normal person do such a crazy thing? So I started talking to his neighbors and I collected their crazy stories in a book titled My Fucking Neighbor. Um, <laughs> and I got to meet a lot of very, very angry people. One of them is uh, Sverre Høstmark from Bergen. He, his lawyer says that he can actually die at any moment now just because of stress. He <laughs> likes to talk to his neighbor with a megaphone or a bullhorn. Uh, and he has worn out seven laser printers just complaining to his neighbors. <laughs> this lovely lady I met in a town called Sandefjord. Her name is Alice. She hates her neighbor's tree for some reason. It's behind there. <laughs> and she has uh, spent five years in court fighting for that tree. And that tree has now ended up in the European Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg. <laughs> My favorite guy, Resat from Bergen, he also. He likes design and architecture and the beautiful uh, things. He hates ugly buildings. And uh, because of that, he one day went over to his neighbor's garden, you can see it in the behind there, and just set his house on fire. <laughs> and I asked him, what was going through your mind? And he only replied with one word, yes. It was a relief for him. And all of these uh, stories, they, uh, they have one thing in common, and that is that these are actually quite normal people, but they are trapped in uh, the inner logic of a, of a fight with uh, someone you have a closer relations to. Uh, and when Norwegians get angry, they use a lot of uh, strange methods. This uh, remote control I is owned by an engineer called Fredrik. Uh, he, uh, he can control with this an electric fan and the fan is connected to a pipe, and the pipe is connected to his sewage tank, which contains 2,000 liters of raw sewage, it's like vintage diarrhea. <laughs> uh, and with a flick of a button, he can blow or bl <laughs> pump his fumes out into his neighbor's house. <laughs> and he did this for weeks, and, uh, and it worked beautifully. But uh, after some time, the police showed up and he got an uh, 800 euro uh, fine. But he told me it was totally worth it. And why? Because it was revenge for a very bad neighborhood. So we have now two strong feelings. Uh, this is from the north of Norway, although it's very green. You can tell this guy who lives here, he's a Liverpool supporter. But the guy who lives on this side on the street, he's a Manchester United supporter. <laughs> And he now wants to sell his house and move. <laughs> this guy on the other hand, he's uh, not a Man U supporter. This is a Liverpool supporter. And he uh, uh, had someone come to his house and rearrange his uh, roof tiles in this manner, <laughs> just to make his life miserable. He had to day take a day off work. Now, the most interesting method I discovered while researching angry neighbors was what's pictured here people just standing outside their neighbor's window and <laughs> staring at them. Sometimes just minutes, sometimes for hours. <laughs> this guy, a legend in the more posh area of Oslo, he hired two graffiti artists just to spray paint his own house. And the, the reason was just to give his neighbor some, something annoying to look at, and they all thought it was a joke, but it uh, stayed like that for uh, almost three years. No, none houses were sold in that area. But 
all of these stories, they are quite, you know, spectacular. But after collecting them for a while, I started focusing or interesting more for the small stuff. And this is what I call the the most Norwegian way to torment your neighbor. I don't know if you have this hit, but every morning in the driveway of a lawyer friend of mine, a small bag of shit appears. And he says to me, he doesn't know if it's dog shit or maybe human, <laughs> but, it, but it's warm. And it sends a, a very powerful message. And the same message you can see here, this is, uh, I call this just Norwegian pettiness. You can't really get any lower than this in your close relations. He only wants to cut his side of the hedge, as you can see. And also here, he, same guy, only wants to paint his side of the staircase. <laughs> now. I, I do some, uh, when I go around and talk about this book and about neighborhood uh, relations, I get a lot of uh, questions about, um, I, I'm not going into this, <laughs> there's too much going on here, but uh, a lot of people ask me, uh, what can I learn? How can I, how can, how can I avoid uh, being confrontational or uh, having a fight with my neighbor? And I will always give just two, uh, two pieces of advice. One, never ever hire a lawyer. It will only escalate your fight and it will always end bad and cost you money. Number two, try to be more like Jesus. <laughs> Turn the other cheek and uh, this Jesus statue, it's, uh, it, ha it actually appeared in my hometown. It's seven meters tall and the neighbors <laughs> hate it. That's it for me, thank you.